Michelle Kay writes, I have decorative transparency sheets. Pretty 4x6 transparencies, which I suppose are meant for photos. And transparencies with journaling lines. I can't figure out a way to use any of them without ruining a photo or covering up something I don't want covered. And how do you journal on a clear journaling spot and have it show up? Glitter Girl, can you help Michelle Kay see through to a transparent solution? Of course I can. Let's have a look at a few different transparency products from the store and then a couple of different layouts and techniques to use them. The company that puts out the most transparencies in the smaller size would be My Mind's Eye and they make a lot of these 4x6 transparencies that fit right over the top of a photograph. This page is from last year's 4x6 Photo Love. This was the October edition with 10 photos and I added a transparency just over one picture because there there weren't any paper squares in, in this layout and I wanted to add a little bit more pattern in and it's really that simple that I just just popped it on top of the photo and placed it in the pocket and to add journaling to that I used some letter stamps with stays on ink and that'll go right over the top of a transparency without any trouble if you want to handwrite on a transparency you need to use something that's very permanent like a slick writer or a sharpie that's probably the easiest way to use them is to take a 4x6 frame, put it right over the top of a photo, and put it into a pocket because I don't need to use any adhesive. It's going to fit there just fine on its own. But there are some other options too. Hambly Screen Prints makes overlays that come in this 12 by 12 size and some smaller ones that are coming soon that haven't quite hit the store just yet but we definitely have these 12 by 12s and this is one of my favorites because it's just filled with all different camera images and you can use this as a full sheet or you can cut it up into different pieces so I'm going to use this in a minute but I'm going to cut it down into a, a strip of cameras rather than a whole page and my mind's eye also recently created these pages. They have two of these. They're in the Follow Your Heart collection and they're the 4x6 frames but you get them on a 12 by 12 sheet so you have six of them all together and they're all coordinated to match and from that you can either cut them apart and use them as one or as two or as three or you can use them all together and I'll come back to that little idea in a moment. And then of course um, you can use just the ones that you buy individually would just be this size. So those two products work it, basically the same way. It's just a case of do you want to buy just one on its own or would you like six to work together or um, cut apart into things for different layouts. When using the frames you'll want something behind them that's going to contrast. So for example if I were going to use this white frame I could cut it out and put it on the craft based pattern paper and that's going to show and in fact any of these are going to show on that design. But of course I can also put it over the top of a photograph so if my photo has dark edges then that white frame is going to show around the edges of the picture. As far as how to attach it, there are all different ways. If you're not putting it into a pocket, you're probably going to need adhesive of some kind. So there are a few different things you can do. You can use normal adhesive, it will stick, but it will show through. So you'll want to use adhesive in the areas that you're then going to cover up with more embellishment. So sometimes that's the easiest way to do it, but it also means that you need to plan ahead where you're going to cover things up on top of that frame. Other things you can use that don't need to be covered up include stitching, where you could just sew the frame to the page. You can use brads, you can use staples, anything that's going to go through and not need to be covered up. A really simple way to use the set of six frames is to create a page where you're going to use those frames all together. So I've just cut off the branding strip and then I've taken a piece of 12 by 12 cardstock and I'm going to cover it entirely so it doesn't matter what color it is, it's just whatever color I had handy and ha didn't need um, need to save for anything special and I covered it with 4x6 photos so I have five of those and one 4x6 journaling card and then placing this frame over the top everything will line up 
and it creates the look of a divided page without needing a special page protector. So I can place this right inside a normal 12 by 12 page protector, which means I can use it in any style of album. Now I use top loading page protectors and ring binders, so I can use divided page protectors if I want, but I know in some albums those aren't a really easy addition. So this would work because all you need is the 12 by 12 page background, and then you'll just put this over the top. And because I'm using this whole page like this, I don't really need to adhere it in any way. I can go ahead and put this in the page protector and it's going to hold everything in place. This doesn't need to be glued to the background page. And from here, I can then finish this. I can add my journaling to the journaling card. I can add um, the title and little captions to all the pictures and I'll show you how that comes together. Here's the finished page with some elements on top of the photos themselves and others on top of the 12x12 transparency. The transparency doesn't need to be attached, it can just be popped right over the top and placed inside the page protector. Of course, using 4x6 photos isn't the only way you can use transparency, so I'm going to show you one more layout from beginning to end. And with this, I'm going to bring in some of the new Jenny Bolin that just hit the store, so I wanted to show you what's uh, available in that collection. Let's start with some paper. This is my favorite paper in the new collection. The new collection is called Magpie, and it has this great uh, spring palette that's not too bright, but it's also not a sickly sweet pastel. And it has this multicolor chevron to bring it all together. And that's definitely a really lovely sheet, and that one is called Compile. There's also this floral. And this is little coffee seals on the back of the text. Nice pink floral that makes a lovely background and also the tile version. Grid paper. This lovely blue and green envelope print. This is the accessory sheet, which includes the journaling cards, the labels, and the borders. And in the borders, you've got handwriting and then a, um, a line from a handwriting book bicycles and coffee seals and then it's polka dot on the back so whatever doesn't take your fancy from this then you have that versatile print to use on the other side that's what I tend to do with all the accent sheets is that I I pick out the bits that I know I want to use the front of and then I whatever I am not going to use I use the polka dot on the back the mini patterns and they're double sided as well so you can use them as mini book pages, you can cut and fold this into a little 4x4 book all on its own, or it's just nice sometimes to have the smaller pattern for your pages. And this one with bicycles and trucks. And I'm going to use um, the bicycle paper because I'm actually going to scrapbook some photos with bicycles, so don't freak out, I'm going to use themed paper in a themed way. I know it's a little shocking. Um, but yes, I'm going to use this bicycle paper and some craft card stock, so I've got those ready to pull aside. I am definitely using this this week, but it's the only sheet I have of this pretty chevron, so I have to be absolutely sure what I want to do with it. Um, but it's not gonna, it's not going to last long. I'm using it this week. I also wanted to show you these. These are the new die cut papers from Jenny Bolin, and they include this alphabet, which you can use just like this, or you can use it as a mask and spray through. So if you want to use, um, if you want to spray your title, or if you just want a nice text background, you can use a mist right through it. And then both pieces end up really nice because this ends up with this kind of beautiful layer of paint over the top, and you can use that on a layout. Plus, you'll get whatever you've painted underneath. So this is a really nice sheet. These are receipts, 
and they're perforated so you can use the whole sheet or you can tear it apart into separate pieces and it'll have that nice perforated edge. This balance sheet type um, type item <laughs> and then this one which is all little rectangles that are perforated and we used to have something like this in um, in stamping it, it was popular in stamping a few years back and basically if you take and tear apart a section so maybe I take these kind of 10 blocks or 8 blocks or however many I want and I take that instead of working on the whole sheet so that I can get more out of it then you can use different colors and stamps and, and inks sprayed over the top and just kind of all sorts of color and collage in whatever way you want to use it. Then you can tear it apart and it will look a little bit like postage stamps and you can separate it out into all the different pieces and it um, creates a, a lovely little look if you like to paint with um, sprays and, and inks and all sorts of things like that and maybe stamp one big design over the top and then separate it. Maybe we'll look at that um, technique another day but I just wanted to show you that as it's brand new. Okay and oh and the stickers and chipboard. There are a few new sticker sheets and this set I really like. There are four different styles in the 6x12 sticker sheet and they include the large um, flashcards, the small round alphabet at the bottom, and then each one has both buttons and tabs, and then there are chipboard pieces to match. So there are chipboard button pieces that fit this perfectly, and the tabs. And this is also the same as the tab punch, so you can punch any kind of paper you want and put it on top of the chipboard if you like that layered look. And um, yeah, so those are all really nice. There's also some smaller uh, sticker sheets with the hexagon patterns. And the hexagons are the honeycomb patterns. They're called quilted stickers. So they look a bit like quilt blocks. And yeah, there's four. So there's a cream and black, the classic Jenny Bolin red and black, and then the colors that match the Magpie collection. But they'll go with plenty of different collections, especially this one because this is all name, date, and place. And you only, you've just got one or two colors on each block, so you don't need to have that full color scheme. You could put it on anything that has some red or some yellow or some green or some blue or some black. So that's most layouts, really. So that's all the new Jenny Bowling goodness. And I'm going to go ahead and get started with a layout using that bicycle paper, which is called Salvage. Some craft cardstock. And then I'm going to use two transparency elements. I'm going to cut one of the 4x6 um, pieces from the Follow Your Heart sheet. And then I'm also going to cut a strip from the Hambly Camera Collection piece. And then I also grabbed just a little bit of pattern paper from the Follow Your Heart Collection, which has these two different turquoise prints. I may need a little bit more pattern paper as we go. I'm not quite sure, but I'll see how we go. I started this layout with a grouping of different scraps of paper. So I started with the two sides of that turquoise that I pulled out at the beginning and the bicycle paper. And I just wanted to emphasize this one so this goes in a different direction than all the others. And then the other pieces are just things that were at the top of my scrap basket. So there's a bit of matte paper in there and some stars and a bit of yellow for some contrast. And then two stickers from the Jenny Bowling collection. and. There from this sheet which is called souvenir and what I wanted to do was play on this idea of you don't forget how to ride a bike so that's why I went with the word memory because the story I'm going to write on this page has to do with um, trying to remember how to ride a bike after not riding one for many many years now I want to use a 4 by 6 photo transparency but I'm not using 4 by 6 photos I have these two insects pictures so they're much smaller and I also want to use a strip of the camera uh, transparency from Hambly. So I've cut that, but I'm not going to use the full 12 inches, but I'm not quite sure how much yet, so I still have all that ready to go. So now comes the tricky part of figuring out where these pieces go, but also how to adhere them. So I'm going to work with this frame first, and I'll come back to the cameras. 
With this frame, I really like how this particular frame looks right on the cardstock background. I tried it over several different patterns and I just don't like it quite as much. It's okay on a really subtle pattern like this that's quite light in the background and doesn't have a lot to distract, but I really do just like how it looks over craft. So the idea I want to work with is using this as a bit of a page element without necessarily worrying too much about the fact that it's a transparency. I'm not going to put anything behind it. I'm just going to add things on top. So what I wanted to do was add these photos perhaps like this over the top of the frame and then I'll end up adding some title and journaling type things here, maybe more embellishment. I'm going to add something into this space that's now just shiny craft. But what I want to do is go ahead and attach this photo to the transparency first because then it will be really easy to adhere the picture or to adhere the transparency because I know what will be covered with the glue. Right. So if I turn this over, now I know I can add adhesive to the transparency in the areas that it won't show. And I don't need to add adhesive to the rest of that. It's going to stay in place just fine. So line that up. I also have the option of tucking this under here, which might work nicely as well. Try that. Maybe just those layers there. Then I have this camera at he, uh, camera transparency. And with this, I liked the idea of adding it in a way where the attachment is going to show. So things like brads, staples, stitches. And I've added a little staple here with the tiny attacher. So I thought I might repeat that with the cameras. In order to figure out where I wanted the camera strip to go, I went ahead and added the stickers that I wanted to spell out the, the title lettering and the place. And then I decided instead of using that two row strip that was quite thick and it was almost as wide as the stars, I would just cut it down into a single strip of cameras that will now fit in that little gap. And I'm going to use the tiny attacher so that the staples match up. And I'm just going to staple it on one end, but I'm going to add three staples to put it in place. And there, there, there's no reason for that other than I just like how it looks. If I'm only going to staple one end, I use multiple staples. And, and now this gives me a good area of the page has been embellished with, and my photos are down. I still need to write all of the, the journaling that I want to go along with this whole theme and then I'll be able to see where I want the rest of the embellishment because I do have quite a lot of empty space on one side of the page and everything is relatively flat at the moment so I do want to add a little bit of something somewhere to get some more action and um, embellishment going. Here's the point where I think I will call this finished. I've added in my writing and then also added in three little areas of embellishment. I started by wanting to extend this in some way to get something over to this side of the page. There would be a little color. So I ran a strip of washi tape across the page and then decided then that green needed to be picked up elsewhere. So I just added a little bit of that washi tape here and here and then repeated an embellishment um, process three times. So I added a stamp. That's from the Amy Tangerine stamp set. And I just used stays on ink so that it would go over the transparency, the washi tape, and the cardstock without any trouble. So started with that, then added a hexagon sticker from the Jenny Bolin sticker sheet. This one called Memo, which is the cream and black. And I just edged them in brown ink so that they would match the mix of the pattern papers. Then with that, added a little word sticker from Authentique, a gem, and the little chipboard hexagons come from the big My Mind's Eye chipboard set. And then just one little word um, or a smaller stamp. This is from the B 
no, from the Follow Your Heart collection. And that's um, one word there, there, and then I used the little butterfly that's from the same set as the words. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I added a little bit of glimmer mist around the edge and sprinkled some little dots around those embellishments. But those embellishments could be anything, and they don't necessarily need to be three or need to be in that position. It just seemed like that was a, a good point to bring things together. So my photo and all this writing is in the middle of those three. So that's nice and easy, and a lot of paper scraps used, so um, I could mix the transparencies and make a bunch of scraps from leftover papers work quite well together. And that's two layouts from transparencies this week, so I think we will call this adventure complete. I'd love see to see what you do with transparencies this week, and I'll see you next week for a new adventure. Join us next week for the continuing adventures of Glitter Girl and the ongoing mystery of the scrapbooker behind the mask at twopeasinabucket.com.